Okay, we're back with Trump Week on a given Wednesday. I'm here with Tim Apicella, Cynthia Sinclair. We're talking about, I guess, mainly we're talking about what's going on in Congress right now, right now. Um, and we have to cover that. We were all watching it to some extent. <clears throat> so let me ask you, Cynthia, what, what, you know, how do you feel about this? You, you watched it, you absorbed it, you let it flow. Uh, how do you react to it? Well, I'll tell you, when I first read um, the title that we chose for today's show, I went, wait, this isn't a game. Hold on. You know, let the games begin. And I thought, but this isn't a game. And then as I listened to the Republicans questioning with these just leading, horrible questions that were obviously trying to set this picture up, and I thought, it is a game to these guys. I don't think it is a game to the Democrats. And I, I think it is it's like it's a game for the Republicans. And that just infuriates me. And the whole thing also terrifies me because I really have a feeling that he will get off on this. It's not, there will be no consequence. And how that sets up for the rest of you know, our country and for the rest of our democracy is just terrifying to me. Yeah. Feelings. Um, first off, good morning. Um, feelings. I, I think there's a part of me that's kind of relieved because we've been talking about <clears throat> this president who largely runs afoul of you know, the rule of law and the Constitution. This was now a time to make an accounting of that. And we were talking about it in the context of the Mueller investigation months and months ago and felt very strongly that he should be held accountable for those activities, which never happened. So here is something else that he's done not soon after the Mueller <laughs> report. He came, comes out and does, does this with Ukraine. It was like a day or two after. Day or two after. So mm -hmm. there is a sense of, I guess, um, relief that finally he's going to be held accountable by historical standards. Now, I, I agree with you as whether or not this will have an impact on whether he stays or leaves office. I guess that's to be determined. But at least there's going to be a historical accounting of what and how he's been operating as president of the United States. Mm -hmm. So I feel relieved. Well, you just made me think that, <clears throat> yeah, that this call, this perfect call, well, was like a day or two after the Mueller report, which means that Trump has spent his entire time in office running for 2020. He's been fascinated and focused and totally, you know, totally into his next campaign. The whole thing, three years, has been his campaign. Mm -hmm. And he, he plays dirty tricks, so he's been playing dirty tricks for three years. Obstruction all along the way. That's one thing that catches me, you know, and uh, I don't know if the public is aware. That's my second reaction. Is, is the public, or the public, you know, in the red states, they watch this. They got it live just the way we got it live, right? And they got the commentary, which I don't know if, what commentary. There are multiple commentaries on what's happening here. But, you know, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time in court in my legal career. And I know how you can try to affect a jury. And the juries are not all that sophisticated, sorry. And the people in the red states are not all that sophisticated either. And they may be buying some of the this very sharp questioning. I say sharp, I mean clever questioning uh, that's going on. You know, you, I'll comment on that in a minute. Uh, well, I'll comment on it now. Um, you know, it's, it's, this, isn't, this isn't, a lot of this would not be permitted in a court of law because they're making speeches, especially Republicans making speeches. And they're insinuating all these things. And they're trying to do trick questions, trick questions on the witnesses. And the witnesses are reasonably well prepared. You know, it's all, you know, it's really, it's a function of how well you prepare a witness. I don't know who's preparing them. I don't know if they're being prepared. Uh, sometimes when they say, you know, that's not what I said, or you misstated what I, what I said before, then that reflects a certain amount of, you know, crisp response, and maybe even they've been prepared. But a lot of the times they haven't been prepared, and they're trying to do the right thing. But I don't know if the people in the red states fully appreciate the process. And I, and I share your concern, Cynthia, that this is not going to be successful if you want to look at it from a Democratic point of view, because the, the Republicans are going to mess it up. They're not messing it up in the way I thought. Maybe there's room for that yet, you know, with a food fight. Not a food fight. Everybody is very Lord Fauntleroy about this, um, but at least most people. But, you know, what I get is that uh, the, the Republicans intellectually are trying to mess up the thinking of the people who are not so sophisticated about this and watching it. They're handing them in defenses. Okay, and my, my third reaction, if you don't mind, just one more reaction, and we'll get into the detail. 
is this. You know, Trump has not only abused power, he's abused us as a country. He's been abusing us for as long as he's been in office. Just the way he abused people on The Apprentice years ago. When I first saw that show, I said, this is an abuse. And he abuses people. He's a bully. He's bullying the whole country. In fact, arguably, he's bullying the whole world. He bullied, he clearly bullied, bullied Ukraine for the benefit of Russia. He hasn't bullied Russia. <laughs> just just a, a little point. But we, what my reaction is, how dare he put us all, all 300 million of us, through this? He, he is totally at fault for everything that has happened. And now for this. This is one great big reality show. He has not achieved anything in his time in office. He has broken and destroyed and divided everything. You know, you can't point to a single success in any initiative, uh, in anything that he has done. There is no, not even the Tax Reform Act, which was not a Tax Reform Act at all. Uh, none of the deals he was talking about, none of the scrapes that he made and argu arguably to achieve a deal, none of them have resulted in any benefit to the country at all. How dare he do this? And the last thing is, how dare we let him do this all this time? This is the worst president ever. The, the founders must be watching too. They must be spinning in their graves, all of them, every single one. That's my reaction. But Tim, let's go to the, let's go to the technical on it. What do you think was happening today? Well, I, I think um, the witnesses, very credible. They were, I think, well prepared to answer the questions. I think their background spoke for themselves. Um, they are dedicated Americans who are not of any particular political affiliation. They just, they're there as career service employees. And now they're here to basically provide testimony of something that they were gravely concerned about. And that word concern was used multiple times. Um, I think Adam Schiff did a nice job of trying to summarize and, and lay out what is before us. And believe it or not, the Republicans did a fairly effective job of trying to basically dismantle this. Uh, specifically, if you wish, I can mention a few Please. things where I think they, they made their points, uh, or they certainly tried to make their points. One is, um, first off, Ukraine was never pressured. The president of Ukraine has admitted that he was never pressured, so they drove that home. And then they said, okay, so, so what? The aid was held up for 55 days. Eventually they got it. Where's the crime? Okay, so they keep pounding on that point that Where's the damage? Where's the harm? Because they actually got their money. And the investigation was never started. That's correct. And then, of course, is um, really, ultimately, so what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Now, remember, we, we called it like we saw it, is that on and on they were going, no quid, no quid pro quo. You know, that didn't happen. Now they're saying, okay, so it happened, big deal. Where, where's the crime in this? Well, you could use the bank robbery analogy, and just because I come up to a teller's window and I have my gun and I show it and I give them a note and they, they have the money ready to give me and I change my mind and I put the gun away and I put my note back in my pocket and I walk out the bank. Uh, the question is, did I commit a crime? No money was taken. Where's the harm? Well, a crime was committed. Yeah, so, I mean, a footnote to that is uh, <clears throat> not that conspiracy is involved here, although I think, in fact, it is involved. <clears throat> but, you know, attempts, there was some discussion some questioning by one of the Democrats uh, about isn't, isn't attempted murder a crime? And the witness said yes. Uh, isn't attempted robbery a crime? And the witness says yes. You know, I mean, the guy was going to go soft on the answer, um, but the, um, the, the questioner said everybody in this room knows that attempted murder and attempted robbery or whatever is, is a crime. And then the witness said, yeah, it is a crime. Yeah. And then he said, and what about attempted, you know, financial crimes? Uh, are they crimes? And then the witness punted. And he said, well, I, I don't really know. And the rule of law is an attempt is just as much a crime as the crime is a crime. That is the rule of law. That is the rule of law. But this, this guy, I, I, I forget which one of them said it. Um, I, I'm not a lawyer. I can't tell yeah. you the answer to that. The right answer would have been, that's a crime. That's a crime. Well, Attempts and are crimes. And remember, a conspiracy is when... Two or more, you know, plan and conspire to commit a crime. Whether the crime took place or not isn't the point. So if, if a lot of the Republicans are putting, you know, 
their weight and measure on saying, well, there's no harm, there's really no crime. That's not, I don't think that's going to work. Well, uh, now, it'll work with people who don't understand this concept and who are suggestible. Well, that's, lack of, that's a lack of civics 101 class it in is. high school. Yes. And a lot of people haven't gone through those classes. Yes. And that's a problem. Yes. Let's give Cynthia a turn. What, what is your reaction on, on the, the technical, you know, procedure, the technical advance of information? Well, I like, I want to read this quote really quick first to start with. This is from Adam Schiff, and it was in the very beginning. It's, this impeachment inquiry aims to answer a simple yet deeply troubling question. Did the president invite or coerce a foreign nation to interfere in our election for his own political gain? If the answer is yes, what we do now will have a lasting impact on our democracy. And I think that's just a really, and I really like the way he has held all of the Republicans sort of at, in check as I watch them try to feed information to the witnesses, right? Trick and questions. Trick Make questions speeches. and all these things, right? And so, and they're trying to um, introduce evidence into the proceedings that hasn't been introduced yet. And they can't do that. He stopped and it cold. He stopped it cold. He's like, no. And they tried to fight back with him, Bob. And he's like, no, I answered that. And Nunes is over there going, you didn't answer the question. And, and Ship is just very yeah. calm, very cool and collected. I really like his attitude and the way he's handling the whole thing. I think he's keeping a little bit of a, um, a cap on the emotions. Of course, you know, then Jim Jordan, or just Jordan, yeah. When he opens his mouth, he's just like this rabid dog. I don't even know how else to describe him. And he has this smug look on his face. And he, he's the one who infuriates me. That's why anyone. he's there. And, it's, and I think, you know, what I'd like is for every single person, before they answer one of his questions, say, I don't know, I might have to take a shower first or something. Because we've got all this stuff coming out about Jordan, and we know that he kept his mouth shut during a lot of sexual abuse that was happening at Ohio State. And um, the fact that he's just getting a walk on it, well, he says, well, I didn't know. Well, there are so many witnesses that say he did know that I go, the guy's credibility is gone. And then I see that smug look on his face and I just. Okay, okay. So, um, <laughs> you know, the, the other thing that uh, came out is um, they, they kept on uh, beating up uh, Adam Schiff about uh, when did you meet with the uh, whistleblower and what did he right. tell you? And, uh, and um, you know, did you have early conversations with him and all this? And at the end, I don't know if you heard this, but. When they were going into recess, uh, Schiff said, well, you know, question has been raised, and I'd like to tell you right now, I never met with him, and then and, and puts the end to it. Or for um, the 40th, sixth time today, yeah. I said, no, I didn't meet with him, and for the last time today, I didn't, didn't yeah. meet with him. Yeah. Well, they did that. Trying to insinuate. Yeah, that he has info, inside info. Right. Uh, and those are lies. They're lies. They're trying to insinuate lies into the proceedings yeah. by repeating it's it. It's called leading, leading the witness. Leading the witness. And that's what they were trying to do with Taylor when they were saying, or Taylor? Yeah, Taylor. Um, when they were talking to him, and they were trying to just put words into his mouth. And they kept talking about the three meetings that he had had with President Zelensky and how in each one of the meetings that this whole pressure campaign was never even brought up. And, and he's like, wait a minute. And I like the way he's sort of keeping his calm. He seems like he stumbles a little bit on some of his answers, but for the most part, he kind of really thinks about it and goes, wait a minute, no. The first one, no. The second one, no. But they, they didn't even know that it was being held up yet. So the third one, they did talk about it because they did know by then. So then they're like, you can see the Republicans kind of trying to scramble around like, uh oh, we didn't expect that answer. Wait a minute. And now what do we do? Trying to adjust, you know, to whatever their response is. Yeah. What makes me uncomfortable is that these questions are, a lot of them are unfair and they're speechifying, which you see in Congress. And the lawyers are very good. The lawyers are yeah, very, are. very super articulate and they know, they know the material. Um, but the Republican lawyers are taking advantage. They're, yeah. they're, they're just in, insinuating things that are not true trying to get the witness to agree. You watch them, watch them in the future, in the next few days. Um, they'll ask a question, which is easy. They say, do you agree? Am I right? Okay, and very quickly, uh, high pace. And then the witness will say, yeah, yeah, okay, you're right. And it'll go like that for like five questions. On the sixth question, there'll be a clunker. 
It's not true. A clunker, yeah. yes. And, and, That's and, a good description. And the guy is in this rhythm, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an old, an old litigation old trick. trick. Yeah, yeah. He's in a rhythm of saying yes, and he says yes to the wrong question. Mm -hmm. Now you're seeing that here. These guys are good lawyers. They're good litigators, yeah. uh, and you've got to give them credit for that. But I was impressed with both, both, both sides. I, yeah, I was. Yeah, um, yeah. They're very good litigators. When one thing that's of interest is this whole hearsay question. You know, all you have is hearsay. Uh, and then somebody spoke up and said, well, you know, hearsay is sometimes better than direct. Here, if you have a lot of hearsay, that really is persuasive. Um, and, you know, I, I, what the, the point that I think Schiff made, somebody made at the end there, was that the only people who have direct information about what Trump said is Trump and the people who are refusing to abide by the subpoenas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these are the ones who could tell us, but they're not telling us. Because Trump is controlling them. Correct. Um, and I and I hope the people in the red states. We may get have this. we may have one. I think it was um, a Taylor staff person who overheard the conversation between Sondland and Trump. Overheard that conversation. So there might be some direct witness testimony. And I think they're bringing this individual on. I don't know tomorrow or this weekend or or um, that he may be able to provide some testimony as a first hand witness rather than a second hand witness. They did keep harping about that, that you weren't firsthand. You didn't hear this firsthand. So you mentioned this morning there was a, uh, some statement by a, uh, a staffer in the White House that Trump had indicated he was not watching this. Yes. Oh, very specifically, yeah. the press secretary, not, yeah, um, yeah the, press, press the girl, and I can't remember her name. Yeah. She was, but yeah, she made an official statement that, that he was not going to be watching the hearings um, today because he's in the Oval Office working, working, and I thought he hasn't worked it. Since he got there. Well, the, what? <laughs> um, sorry. Turkey is visiting the White House today, are they not? Oh, I don't know. So they, 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 it could be true. Maybe it's he true. may be engaged in conversation with uh, Erwan. Right, and he's got a DVR. I'm sure he'll watch it later if he yeah. didn't see it today. Uh, you know, on that <laughs> note, you know, just, just to digress for a moment, uh, looking back at his three years of presidency, what, you know, what has he achieved? Um, what, what work, quote, has he done aside from the golf course? Uh, what, what benefits have we achieved? That, as I said before, the Tax Reform Act is a joke. It doesn't reform anything. And it feeds uh, benefits to the rich, and it screws the poor and the middle class. Uh, so what, what exactly, what kind of work has he done? He's he done, hasn't made any deals. Of all the deals that he has told us about, of all the hotspots around the world, he hasn't made a single deal. The world is not a better place. He's alienated our allies everywhere. And he's, um, you know, he's promised, yeah, he's promised deals with North Korea, nada. He's promised deals with uh, China, nada. In Wakefield, all blue in the face. <clears throat> and he screwed up the deal with uh, Iran and he hasn't, he hasn't patched it up now, they're making bombs. Uh, so, you know, have I got it wrong? Is he doing anything? Yes. What? He's Destroying he, climate change. Well, you said, well, unfortunately, you said aside from his golf courses, because there was a court decision that Donald Trump is going to have to pay $2 million back from stealing from charities, and he was stealing from charities to benefit uh, his campaign and his golf courses. Um, specifically, a portrait of himself for $10,000. That's sitting in one of his golf courses. Um, a Tim Tebow helmet that he paid for in an auction that came out of this charity. Now, yes, he's doing something. He's doing something for himself, as we all know. But here's the bottom line. He's got to pay back $2 million. He's admitted to it. His children, all three of them, who are officers of this charity, are now having to go to remedial education about what, how not to steal from charities. Mm -hmm. How sad is that? Peel it, peel it. He's not going to pay the $2 million. He'll appeal yep. it. No, he's going to pay he's it. I think they finally the just said, fine, we're, we're going to settle this out. I, mm. I doubt they're going to appeal this. Mm. Okay. So, you know, here's a case where, you know, and, and one of those was a, a veteran's benefit uh, in Iowa. And the bottom line is you don't st raise money for veterans and take money away from the veterans and put it into your, your golf course or a Tim Tebow a football helmet or jersey. Mm. These are silly things. But and, and then you lie about it. Well, and, and here's a court that has now come out against him on this. Yeah. So. Well, maybe it'll catch up. You know, I know people who tell me that, who console me, and they tell me it'll, it'll all catch up and we'll have justice here. But I don't know if we'll have justice with DACA, uh, you know, for the Dreamers. I, I think that uh, Obama made a, an executive order out of it. Trump made an executive order repealing the mm -hmm. earlier executive order. 
Um, the, the argument is he did it for a bad reason, but I'm not sure that works. Um, and, and the Supreme Court is way more conservative now than it was. I think 700 kids, I call them kids, are going to be uh, out of luck. Uh, what do you think about that? What is that? What, is that, what do you think is going to happen? And what kind of a stain, uh, a, a brand, does that leave on him? You know, on the one hand, appointing all the conservative judges, and on the other hand, not, you know, withdrawing DACA, let these people swing. I think that it's not just him that needs to hold the responsibility <clears throat> for this. I think it's the Senate, specifically <clears throat> our wonderful Moscow Mitch out there, just letting every bill that comes before him die, refuses to vote on it, won't let it go through. So it had no choice but to go to the court because it should have been handled in Congress. Should not have even ever had to go to the courts. Right. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 Well, I think if you if you look at the world, it's either in black or white, and you don't you acknowledge there's no gray in this world. Um, those who are you know vehemently anti-immigrant, they're going to like that. And there are those that say, well, I think there's middle ground, or you know, uh, they are, you know, they were brought to this country under no fault of their own as children. Um, you're going to say, I, I, I want a little bit of a compassion for these individuals, and I'd like to see a path forward for them. So yeah, it depends yeah, on how you view the, view the world. The argument uh, they make, the, the, the dreamers, is that they relied on this. I'm not sure that's all. Well, you were argument. brought forth to self-identify. Now that you've identified, but you were lured in by the federal government, yeah. and now that's going to be worked against you, um, that's, I don't think that's legal. Basically unfair. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't think it's, it's legal. In, inequitable. Yeah. Is what it is. There's, a, there's a term for it, and you can't lure someone in with a promise <laughs> and then use that, that act of luring them in now be right. used against them. It's almost like entrapment. Right, yeah. it is. Yeah. What about the Remington case, uh, where the, these uh, parents of the oh yeah, Sandy of Hook the, the victim the, the victims of Sandy Hook who were killed uh, go to court to sue Remington, and you know I don't think they would have had to sue Remington if we had you know uh, gun control in this country. We don't have gun control in this country, and the NRA fights it even now. Um, so the Supreme Court, you. you well, that's the very top line, right? Has said that that suit can proceed. Um, it's an issue, I suppose, as to what happens in that suit, because uh, if if the, um, the families of the children, you know, win a big verdict, that can go on appeal, and there can be some technicality going forward. What it tells me, I, that I mentioned to you guys, is that for the lack of action by Congress, okay, this is going to have to be resolved by lawsuits by the parents in court. Mm -hmm. And that's going to have to be the way in which we discourage people from allowing these weapons on the streets. But I, I plant that firmly. You can say it's Congress's fault, but I plant it firmly on Trump. Trump said after so many of these incidents that he was going to do something about gun control. But each time the NRA came around and changed his mind. And knuckles mm -hmm. him under. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't think we can forget his record here for the past three years. Um, and well, I think we f forget that what happened, there was some reference to this, was oblique this morning. <clears throat> what happened in the, uh, his communications and in the affair in Ukraine was that, um, you know, Ukraine got screwed uh, and our interests in protecting Ukraine got screwed. The only, the only one who benefited was Russia because of that delay, because of the, you know, the undermining of uh, Zelensky's credibility, which I'm, I'm sure it's still undermined. Um, and so there we go again. The strange relationship with, with, with Russia, with Putin, keeps on surfacing all through these three years of his administration. What does Putin have on this man? It must be huge. Everything that happens favors Putin. Yeah, right. and we don't know. Yeah. Um, all I know is Zelensky was elected president <clears throat> to stamp out corruption. And that was his platform, and that's why he won. And now he's embroiled in corruption. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a sad comment right there. Well, his, the claim of the Republicans this morning was that he was stamping out corruption by asking um, Zelensky to, um, you know, to have an investigation about corruption. But that's not corruption. It's not corruption in the context of, of Biden and his son. Um, what's interesting, too, is that the transcript shows no, no reference yeah. to the word corruption or corrupt. The only thing it shows is, can you do me a favor? 
2016 and the Biden's yeah. charisma. That is the Republicans' defense is that he was just merely calling to stamp out corruption, as you said just now. Yeah, no can't. mention of corruption in that transcript. Right. None. Yeah. There was something else that I have been looking up <clears throat> over this last week that I read a few news articles about. And the New York Times put this out in 2018. And it was an interesting bunch of information about how um, they were doing, Ukraine was doing an investigation into Manafort, right? Because that's where Manafort's, all of his oligarch connections were, the Russian-backed um, Ukrainian. Well, so right about the same time, and they don't have proof, right? So, but I, I this is like one of those, um, when enough uh, hypotheticals start to build up. You go, wait a minute, something's wrong here. There's definitely a red flag on the play. But at any rate, they dropped the investigation into Manafort at the same time, almost identically the same time that they got the first order of Javelin missiles. That's just too much of a coincidence, if you ask me. That suddenly it's dropped and they were... They had already said, yes, we will. They had agreed to cooperate with the Mueller investigation. Then suddenly they changed their minds. Well, you know, you said it this morning, and I think, I think clearly um, he doesn't tell us everything. Not only does Trump lie and provide disinformation, but he doesn't tell us everything. So many things are happening or not happening in the country. So many destructive actions that he's been taking we're not taking in the country, um, you know, and I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever find out what is really going on in this in this presidency. So much is under the hood, and he takes such steps to keep it secret. Well, there's staff people that know. There's cabinet members that know, and someday their be their books will be published. Yeah, we got a lot of books already. Yeah, already <laughs> we have a lot of books. States read the books. The shelves of my library are tilting to one side. <laughs> one, one, right. bright, one bright thing happened. In a, in a National Public Radio went into the South and they interviewed uh, the members of an evangelical church to see if, if the evangelicals were as firm on Trump as they had been before. And they found that oh, a good percentage of them, maybe half, had, had, had turned and were no longer supporting Trump, especially the African-American members of these evangelicals. So maybe there's a process happening here. Maybe it's eroding. Was this a survey? I'm sorry? Interviews. Interviews, interviews yeah. right. Ad hoc interviews. Right. Okay. In, uh, anyway. So <clears throat> we're almost out of time. I want to ask you guys, <clears throat> you know, what, what's going to happen with this hearing? We, we have the smell of it now. There'll be more wrinkles and maybe there'll be some chills and spills and thrills, but we, we're in the crucible with them. We can see how it's going on. We can feel how the, the country is interested. Um, what's going to happen here? Be honest. Well, you know, I don't know. And that's what makes me so afraid. Because, unfortunately, because the Republicans are so entrenched in their thoughts of protecting this man, and I think maybe protecting their own um, reputations also, because they've been so complicit for so long. So now their, line, their stuff is on the line, that's too. That's a good point, Cynthia. And so I'm thinking kind of their, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, and I'm worried. I'm worried that the Democrats will be too nice. I don't want to see politically correct. I want to see them get right into it with these guys and not, you know, blow for blow because I don't want to see the very thing that you know, you think, we despise. You think the, but, uh, right now, do you think that the House will vote to impeach? Oh, yes, I, I do believe that Okay, and this trial, if you will, is a trial, even though Trump's not there, and the people around him don't, you know, reject the subpoenas. Um, you know, is kind of a trial, um, advanced trial for the Senate. Mm -hmm. So it would, by the time it gets to the Senate, if it ever does, when it ever does, <laughs> um, you know, what's, what's going to happen there? What does this mean um, you know, to the, the, the larger process that we're seeing this? It's a strange thing. It hasn't happened in the past. They've done it in secret, and then they pass it off to the Senate. Senate has a trial. We're having a trial in the House. They're going to have the same trial again. Uh, people are going to be really tired. Uh, and maybe, you know, they're making such a case that if they wind up making the case again, yet again, you know, I mean, the defense, uh, it's, it's going to rule the day. I, I, I think there's going to be some poll taking. And after the House hearings, there'll be some poll taking. 
And if, if numbers are shifting away from President Trump, then they're going to do their better effort in the Senate for the trial. If the numbers aren't shifting, this Senate trial may be very quick, mm -hmm. very quick, matter yes. of fact, and we're done. Incredible. Because the, I think it comes down to the constituent. And if the constituent is bothered by this, um, you know, getting something from the Ukrainians to do his political bidding, his political favor, then that will mean something. If they see this as a break of the rule of law, then that, that will be something. If they don't, then this matter is going to be swept under the carpet and it's 2020 election. And it comes down to the constituent. A do they, and yeah. he's going to feel, if he gets through this and gets reelected, he's going to feel that he can call on any foreign power mm -hmm. to you know, get involved in American politics and do really horrendous things. And, and his successors will have an open channel on that too. So bottom line, I'm concerned too. I'm concerned the country is in trouble. The country has been in trouble for the last three years, but right now it's not working well for the country. And I'm hoping that people will see that, that the base will see that, hopefully, that Congress will see that. Yeah. I'm hoping that they see the, the difference between the law and breaking the rule of law. And for me, it just comes down to that. And if it means something to them, then they'll spark up to their senators, and the senators may shift. Okay. Uh, we'll have to keep following this. Exciting. Scary. Scary. <laughs> Cynthia, <laughs> Cynthia Sinclair, Tim, Tim uh, Epicella, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jay. Thank Thanks you, for Jay. having me. Oh, we appreciate it. Aloha. Nice to see you this morning. Well, we see you next week. You so, will. Yes. All right. Aloha. Aloha.